Welcome to Rude Awakening TV. Today we're going to do something else that families do. Last week we uh, celebrated a birthday and we made special food for the birthday person. But everybody in their family or the people, the humans you call family, have special dishes that somebody likes. So as the matriarch of the family and as the uh, the nurture of a small family, I see who likes what and then I try to make it and tailor it to them. So lately I've been thinking about my daughter's partner, John, and how he holds the fort for this dynamic woman that live streams a lot. And I thought about his favorite food and he likes uh, a cookie that my grandmother always called Jam Jams. And when we met John, he said, oh, in the UK, we call those Jammy Dodgers. So we started to call those uh, Jammy Dodgers. So uh, John is from the UK and I often try and recreate foods that he may have liked back home. And I don't know if I always do that, but I try anyway. So we're also going to, after we get done our Jammy Dodgers, we're also going to make uh, a poor Belle Helene, which is really just a poached pear. And there's two methods, and I'm going to show you both of those methods. Now, a few weeks ago, we made cinnamon buns. And that struck a chord with a lot of viewers. And they sent a lot of photos in. Now, what I'm going to, we're going to show those to you. What I'm going to ask you to do is in the subject, I would like it if you could put what it is. Not that these photos were bad but some of them were good and some of them were good. So in the subject matter, if you could put cinnamon buns so that we don't think it may be blackened catfish. So those photos are on their way. Take a look at what our viewers made. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. So now we're going to go right into the poached pears. And I see that Papa Joe said that his gram used to make them. It's funny you mentioned that because my gram used to make the jammy dodgers. And we're going to talk about uh, the, the people that influence you and, and teach you how to cook. And my gram is right up there with the top influencer. So we're going to start with the poached pears. Now I made these uh, yesterday and so I'm going to make them again because they're that delicious and we're going to make them two different ways. You need a saucepan and you need two cups of water. And after two cups of water, you need two cups of sugar. Oh, whew, I thought I only had one cup of sugar. One, uh, two cups of water, two cups of sugar. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. It's a, that's a simple syrup. That ratio is one to one. So stir that all around. We're going to get the poached pears on and then we're going to start the cookies because these have to simmer and you need to simmer them for 20, 15, 20 minutes. Yesterday, I, in the week I made an orange flavored one and yesterday I made a wine one and I found that uh, poaching them a little longer didn't hurt. Okay, so we put two cups, we're going to put one full lemon let me show you how to do that. My knife, here it is. Okay, one full lemon. So what you want to do is make sure that you get the lemon juice in, but not the seeds. Zero, six, John. John is on. Yay. See? See how that boy loves me? All right, you've taken the, or the 
All right, can I just show you that I cut my finger yesterday, took the fingertip right off, and right now lemon juice is in it. Whew. All right, you take the juice out, and then you're going to put the whole rind in. Do the other one. Mmm, lemon's nice. So you're going to just juice it. You might have a different way of juicing, and that's fine. You see that I'm catching all the seeds there. Okay. I'm going to clean that up because I need, oops, I need that for another dish. How many of you also start your cooking? This is a habit of mine. You start your cooking, and the first thing you do is you fill your sink up with soapy water because I like to keep my mess up. I like to wash my hands often. Okay, we need this for the jammy dodgers, so we're going to put that aside to dry. All right, what do I have in here? Two cups of water, two cups of sugar, and a lemon. We're going to put in for this poaching liquid, it's a little sticky, I don't want to just put it. We're going to put a cinnamon stick. We're going to put in uh, about four whole cloves. So you're just making a, a nice, nice poaching fluid. And then you're going to have one star anise. This is not important for everybody. It's really important for me because it has that anise, that real uh, licorice scent. You're going to put that in there. Now, choices. Oh, I had a half a lime from making uh, something yesterday. I'm going to put it in. Why not? It'll add some flavor. I don't like to waste. Now, we have the choice. We can make it uh, just a plain lemony, zesty, cinnamony poaching fluid, or we can make the wine poaching. Let's take a vote on the chat. Do we want wine in it or do we want just lemony? Wine deaf. Rude Awakening TV says wine deaf, but that's my moderator and he knows he's eating them. So he would say that. Wine, wine, wine says speaking. Oh, whoa. Okay. No choice. And it's, it's my own wine as well. Center. So he says no. Okay, I'm going to put, and this is a little bit more than half a bottle, but I'm going to put in, you're watching this, I'm going to put in almost half a bottle. Yeah, it takes a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, let's put this aside. Look at how lovely that, that poaching liquid looks like. Really good wine. It is really good wine. Now we're going to peel the pears. I have a story to tell you about the pears. I bought these, would you believe, for Christmas because I thought I was going to have huge Christmas celebration and then COVID ripped that out of my fingers. So I had these in a fridge out in my garage, which somebody has, some people have a fridge in their garage. And they froze solid, and I thought that they were completely garbage. I went to take them out, and I realized, no, they're not. They're perfectly fine, so you can freeze pears. Here's what I want to do. I don't want to take the core out, and you sometimes see people take the core out of a pear, but I don't want to do that. All right, my friend uh, Scott is on right now. You'll see him on there, Scooter on. Hey, Scott. Uh, Scott has a birthday coming up. He has a birthday next Saturday. So by the time we do our Sunday show, it'll have passed. But I would ask Scott if he could suggest one of his favorite drinks. And next Sunday, I would like to create that drink. He can DM me with that. I'd like to make that drink and we'll celebrate to him turning 52. All right, cut the bottom off. That's because, when, look at how lovely that is. When it's poached, it's going to lie flat on your plate and then you can decorate it like that. You drop it in. Lovely, lovely. Okay, I'm going to do them all because, you know, some people like, ah, like to see that done. I could have done a few. I mean, I wouldn't have chosen that movie not something I would have gone and so I thought I'd watch it anyway and it was really good uh, it was really good it showed you how that kind of misogynistic behavior was in movies and if you get a chance Roseanne Barr it uh, is a star in it if you have seen it let me know 
it was so funny. So you see, I'm putting one in. I didn't trim that. You don't want to trim all the stem off. Okay, so what am I going to These are really nice pears. I cannot believe these froze solid. And I expected that they would mush right out. We've got a lot of fog here in the Kawartha Lakes. I see people here from Toronto and I know for uh, from Windsor, Scarborough. I'm wondering if you've got the same fog. Drive careful if you're out there. All right, just peeling the last one. These, they're not hard to make. They take a little bit of time. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to make those today and have them tonight, it's not going to happen that way. Again, isn't that lovely? And it fits perfectly on a plate when you cut the bottom off. Notice I'm not taking the core out. There's something I've done with the ones I had yesterday that I was going to show you, but I, I just don't think it looks as nice. You can cut it down the middle. You can use even just a measuring spoon or a melon scoop, and you can take the core out and you can put two halves in there. And that might be something you want to serve it. Today we're going to just do them whole, but I'll show you the halved ones. So make sure they're covered. Look at how they're starting to take on the color already. That's the beauty of it right there. Now that will poach for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm just going to wash my hands. I love pears too. And pears with cloves is something that, uh, you know, when as a kid we had a pear tree, so we found creative ways to eat pears. And this was not one of the ways. It, we, we did something similar, of course, not with the red wine. All right, this goes on and simmers for that little bit of time. Chris disagrees. Chris disagrees with? Pears. What? Who hates pears? He hates, he hates wine and he hates oh, well, Chris, you're going to have to focus on the jammy dodgers then. Okay, if you go into a store and you look for these cookies, there's uh, a few companies that make them and they call them jam jams. As a kid, uh, my grandmother made these quite often in different forms and they, she called them jam jams, but after Googling it, I realized half the world calls them jammy dodgers. So we do that now. All right. So the pears are on the simmer. Oh, I forgot to show you something about the pears. Woo, that wine just went down. And it's pretty important. This is a pretty important part. You need to take a little piece of parchment paper. And when you're using it as a lid, it's called a cartouche. So you're going to put it in there. And this will make sure that they don't bob up and when it's simmering you are it's easier for you just to as you walk by pat it down so that they spin because you want them to be coated all the way around and stained the red all the way around so do that um, I'm going to put them on I'm going to put the lid just a little bit and that's done okay I don't even have a pair until I was 19 wow Never heard anybody do that before. All right, um, let's talk about my gram for a minute. Uh, my gram lived to 103 and she was bake extraordinaire. And, and I know that I took her for granted because I would just come in the house and there would always be cookies. And these were something she made often. So I had the, the uh, unconditional love of my grandmother until I was in my 50s. And some of her cooking skills are ingrained in me uh, very deep. So this is one of them. Wow. I Oh, I'm being raided. No way. Who is it? Ooh, awesome. Okay. Let's get back to this. Um, yeah. We, okay. Getting back to it. One cup of butter. Yes, indeed. One cup of butter, but I don't like to put butter in like that. I do like to cut it up a bit. Wow, I'm being raided just as the cookies are coming out. Yes, I was very, very happy with those cinnamon buns. They just started rolling in the last two weeks, and I was thrilled with seeing some of them. And some of them really made me laugh. And the one that said nailed it, 
I didn't do that, Papa Joe. I did not do that. The person who sent it did that, and I thought it was pretty funny because hardly. But you know what? You make something, it doesn't turn out. You make it again. That, those, that was not my first batch of cinnamon buns. You make things a few times, you get better at it. One cup of butter and then one cup of sugar. It's a very basic sugar cookie recipe. It's not the recipe cookie. It's the, the assembly with the jam. All right. Let's, I'm going to use my whisk first. I hope this is plugged in. And we're going to get that butter and sugar going into um, a nice, smooth, creamy condition. And then we're going to put in two eggs. Let's get the sugar and the butter melting or to combining. Okay. I got a new whisk that I'm really happy with. Am I here now? That I'm really happy with. And I found this at Value Village for $3.99. It's not metal. It's plastic, it's plastic, but wait till you see what it does. Okay, so I'm going to put my two eggs in. Not quite ready for my whisk. That wasn't a very good... Oh, I can hear my eggs starting to poach. This is an induction stove and it works by, if you don't have one and you've always wondered about that, it works by sending magnetic waves through the pot. It doesn't heat the pot, it hits, heats the food inside. So you hear a little bit of a whine sometimes while it's cooking because it's induction. All right, let's get that nice. Those eggs are going to make it creamy. Let's put about a teaspoon of vanilla in there. That's about a teaspoon, right, Monique? Let's get some real good blending. If you don't blend the butter, you're going to have a cookie dough that has big chunks in it. Not good. Nobody likes that. That was room temperature butter. It was coarse and dairy butter, nice and creamy. Ooh, it's starting to look good. That's what you're looking for. You can see that it's getting a nice consistency. Let's do it a little bit more, put it a little higher. My oven is set at 350. Double check that these are, yep, they're starting to cook. That just, you put it away and it starts to do its thing. Nice. Okay, the next step is we're going to add in the flour. There's no baking powder, there's no baking, uh, soda, there's no salt. So we're now going to add in three cups of flour. That's it. So this recipe is butter, sugar, eggs, vanilla, flour. I'm going to add half of that in, ooh, half of that in, and I'm going to get it incorporated. So I have taken these to John in a great big plastic container and I have said these are yours only, and I have a feeling he's consumed those in a couple days, but that's okay. You only get them once in a while. Every once in a while, I like to spend some time with John. I remember one time we took an afternoon and he went to the Hockey Hall of Fame with me, and John doesn't like hockey. And that was fun. And then we went to Jack Astor's and we had a bevy together and we laughed and I felt really special that day. He knows how to do that. Okay, I'd like to have that afternoon again sometime, John, when COVID is done and your city is not under some kind of lockdown, we'll do that. All right, I should have changed. I was reminiscing about my afternoon with John and I forgot to change my whisk. As I said, uh, John's from the UK. He has a fantastic accent that the Canadian people can hear. We um, used to look at him like, what are you saying? But now we, we know, and I think John kind of tones it down for us so that we, our Canadian ears understand, but we just love some of the way he says things. And my grandmother was half British, so 
often he'll say things that just puts me back into my grandmother's world and I appreciate him for that too. I feel like I want to sing Kumbaya pretty soon. All right, here we go. We're going to put that up. This is my new whisk. Watch this baby work. See, it pulls it all from the sides. Look at that. Now, we're going to get ready for the fun fun. Look at that. That new thing makes that whole cookie dough go boom. Listen, I have found that this show is turning into making things that I've discovered people like. And if you've got something that you think, you know, I'd really like to have that cooked, send me a message. We just might include that. Might become the feature of a cooking show. Okay, we have got a nice dough. Now, the thing about this dough, some people say, oh, your cookie dough now has to be uh, cooled in the fridge. I don't do that. This one does not have to be, it, it, it gets a little stiff in fact. This is how much we get out of one cup of butter, one cup of sugar, two eggs, vanilla, and three cups of flour. So, oh yeah, let's put the recipe up. If you want, it's so simple that you're going to see the recipe and say, why did we need to even see that? It's so simple. I hate for John to see how simple it is because he's going to say, gee, I used to be impressed by her, and I'm not now, and heaven forbid. Okay, simple tools. You're, you're already going to think, well, I don't know if I have. Remember, you don't have a rolling pin in your kitchen? Use a wine bottle. It'll work. You don't have a stand mixer? Mix that by hand. Those ingredients are easy. I don't have a cookie cutter? Take the lid off your cocktail shaker and you've got the perfect cutter for a jammy dodger. I do have a few. I've got, um, what is this one? That's a two inch. This is a half inch because a jammy dodger is, uh, if you've seen the pictures on Instagram, it's a basic cookie and then it has a lid, so it's a double cookie, and there's a hole in it so that you can see the contents of the middle come through. I've also got a scalloped cookie cutter. You don't need this. We're going to go back to the lid off of your cocktail shaker, and I've got to take a little bit and start that. Hairspray bottle. Well, you know, uh, Bombay, not everybody uses hairspray, but um, I imagine some of you do. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't know this, but I was told recently that only old ladies part their hair on the side. That, don't, that duck don't fly. So I decided to part my hair down the middle. Do you notice the difference? How youthful do I look today with the part down the middle? I do need my bangs cut. Yes, I am going this week. Finally, we can start getting haircuts. So different, I know. I know, it's like a new me. I looked, I said, who's that girl? And it, and it was just my part. Okay, so you wanna uh, roll this out about an eighth of an inch. And if you can eyeball an eighth of an inch, good on ya, I can't. But some of you may want it thicker. And yesterday when I made them, I did that. Look at how smooth and lovely that is. I'm going to show you what you do. You get two pans going. Why? Why two pans going? Because you want to put your solid base on one cookie sheet and you want to make the one with the hole on it on a different cookie sheet because that's going to cook a little bit faster and you don't want these browned. So I've made a few different ways. Can I show you my favorite way? I don't have a small enough hole. My favorite way, this is the camera, right? Is to use my rasp like that, and I've just given my, to make that, and I like that a lot. I'm gonna start doing it on that. So you just go make a whole bunch. Get them going so that you're not here forever. Of 
course you have to roll and re-roll. So for every cookie solid you make, you want to make sure you've got one for, with the holes in it. So I'm, I do it slowly, no sense in rushing, but that's a perfect little cookie. You can see the thickness, except I just mushed that. You can see the thickness, an eighth of an inch. Remember, you have two cookies together, so think about an Oreo, which Liz does a lot. All right, so I've got this little heart press. How cute is that? Uh-huh, I know. So I'm preferring the little hearts. I think they're adorable. Cute as heck. You're going to see that yesterday I actually used the half inch one. I'll do one for you. I don't think it looked very nice. It took out almost too much. So I have that. Looks like one of those like a uh, apple ring. I don't, I'm not going to use that. It's too much. I'm just going to stick with the heart. I thought those were nice. Well, well, that one wasn't, but you know, fold it around, whatever. So I'm trying to make six. Got to get rid of those. There, see another one. Okay. So far, what do you think? Would you find yourself <laughs> Would you find yourself making these? Maybe. You know, um, another thing you can do, these are a wide open palette again, get creative with it. What can you do? You could add a little cocoa powder into this uh, bat, into this cookie dough, and you could make chocolate ones and put a little Nutella. And I know that John likes Nutella. My grandson loves Nutella. Nobody really likes to be around them after too much Nutella because wow. But you know, there's caffeine in it, there's chocolate in it, all those good things, sugar. Okay, my poached pears are going. Keep your ears open. Ooh, it's a nice simmer, not a boil. It's a simmer. Perfect. I'm going to send those to Chris. Uh, those little hearts, yeah, I just fold those right in. Keep it, keep it loose on the board. You notice I don't spread all the dough out because eh, I like to keep everything neat and I can really determine the size when I do it like this. Get the edges, make sure you get an even dough. This is a little thick on this end. I knew this jammy dodger was going to slow things down and it was going to be a little bit more of a chill and I think that's okay. A little thick on this side. If you're feeling a little bit of anxiety in your life, these are great to make because they take a little time. I'm going to show you the cocktail shaker lid. Look at that. Do you see any difference? No. So find something around the house. You never know what you have. Whoops. You never know what you have to use as a cookie press. Oh, this is going to make about two and a half dozen, if not more. It depends how big. Now, this is the basic cookie dough recipe I will use for Valentine's Day, of uh, um, Halloween, Christmas, it's basic cookie dough. So I am going to fill this tray up with nine or 12, uh, 20. How many do I have here? 15. Okay, so I've got 15 nicely spaced. If you can see this, I'm going to bring it over. Try not to misshapen them because they won't line up. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to bake these two and then they're going to be filled with something and then you're going to have the two together. So you want to make sure the shape stays nice. That's ready for the oven. I'm going to put them in at the same time. Let's just do the tops now. See, I don't like this. I think I'm going to fold that one right back in. I don't like it. It looks, you'll see, I did some like that yesterday. My favorite ones are just when I use that. I should find something that is the exact size that I like. So uh, Tuesday nights on the Speakeasy channel, you really want to tune into uh, a late night show that is funny, funny. It's, uh, Chance of Showers is the host, and I watch it routinely. Like for me to be up that late, I watch it routinely because it, it, they crack me up. Oh, next week is a show that uh, there. There's a a 
Twitch performer who uh, is on hmm, Glass Night, uh, does a great job. But the thing that really strikes me about her is that every time I go on, it's not my, uh, she plays video games, so it's not my thing. But every time I go on, she's inclusive of me. She makes sure that she says hello to me. She makes sure, knowing that I'm not her audience, knowing that this isn't my my thing. But I still go on. I see what she's talking about. Last night she was putting on her makeup online. And, you know, these are the kind of things that we enjoy watching people do. So uh, she. I'm, next week I'm doing a program based on a cake designed for her. She told me that she likes cake. She told me that she likes coconut. So next week I am making a mile high coconut cake called the Ivory Tower Cake. And I hope that you can come and watch me do that. So many things happening on that Speakeasy channel. It's just becoming my main entertainment. We are going to do a bit more of these now. You know I'm doing that Essential Tools series. Well, today I have to finish the series. Today is on storage and supplies. Yeah, not as interesting as other things, but you never know. You might just get something. You might say, oh, I never thought of that. And if you did, good. I don't know if you've noticed that when I go to make these cookie holes, I'm shaking. No, I don't have anything wrong with me. I think I had too much coffee this morning. See what I do? So this is a tool you may have, or you may have something like this. And I'm just going back and forth, and I'm making a little oval. It's my favorite one. Like I said, I'm sure there's a tool out there for this, and I've never considered having that tool. So I'm going to put uh, 15, and that will match me up perfectly. If you like the little heart, I did too. That is just a little fondant press that I have. Parrots are starting to smell good. I can smell the wine. Okay, those are ready for the oven. Yes, I have lots of dough here, but you get the idea that what this is. So I am going to store this dough because I have a lot of cookies. I'm going to store this dough for another cookie time, and you can freeze this. So if I put it in this bag, which will just fit, I freeze this dough. Someday I feel like just a few cookies, and I could add something to it. I could add fruits, nuts, chocolate chips, and that's going into the freezer. Okay, these are ready for the oven. So I'm going to put them in the oven, but we need to set a timer because you don't want these to be brown. These will, oh, let's do it the other way around. Let's put the bottoms here and the tops here. Now, who's going to tell me? Somebody set a timer right now because I don't want to play with my timer. Somebody set a timer for 10 minutes. Okay, let me look at my chat because somebody might tell me 10. Okay, somebody might uh, tell me something that I'm forgetting about. Really, uh, the Speakeasy channel supports me so much that I just want to tell you that you should go on there for some entertainment. S some of the shows might strike you as being perfect. Some might you might say, maybe not, but everyone I go on sort of draws me in and I'm there before I know it. Okay, Allison's going to tell me good. All right, folks. Ooh, look at the steam coming from the poached pears. Doesn't that look nice? So what we have is yesterday's cookies. And I'm going to show you how to assemble these cookies. Yes, I know those are cooking, but I can make those later. They don't need to be made right now. They will cool anyway. So these, I like to make these and then cool them for a good long time so that the jam really sets on them nice. So we have some options. You see, here's my solid bases. I didn't cut too many of these today, but I made these yesterday. And here's the, the big O-rings. And I, I'm not sure if uh, those are as appetizing looking. So what are we going to put on those? Okay, we're going to put some jam. 
That's why they're called jam jams. But another thing is I made some dulce de leche. And it was simple. If you want to make this, it's a caramely thing. And what you want to do with it, this is just sweetened condensed milk that I baked in a water bath for about an hour and three quarters, like a good hour and 45 minutes. Simple. Open the can of sweetened condensed milk, put it in a pie plate, put it on a sheet with some water. It can't go right into the oven or it'll burn. Put it into a sheet with some water for a water bath and cook it for an hour and 45 minutes and you will have this. It's a little grainy. I should have stirred it in between, but I didn't have time. So we could use that in our cookies today. All right, uh, we're going to now assemble some of these. I had a knife here to assemble. Oh, here it is. Okay, so what kind of jam would you like to put in there? I have nothing. I, I looked for some kind of an orange jam, very nice, like an apricot or an orange marmalade. So I have blueberry and raspberry. I don't think John ever cares what flavor I put on. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of raspberry. Put it on the and not pretty side. You don't want that. Don't go right to the edge. I may have put a little bit and then find one that matches. Try and line up the notches if it's a... If it's a scalloped one, let's start, let's start plating those. Nice. Can you see that there? No? Okay. I need to put that where you can see it. Can you see it now? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to do this so it really stands out. All right, let's keep going. So uh, let's make one with a perfectly round one. Okay, I still used the raspberry. I'm going to put a little bit of a heart one there. Look at how beautiful that is. I hope, I hope, I wish I could get these to John. I may freeze them and on our next trip to Toronto bring them. All right, let's put a little blueberry. You'll see that it just gives you a different look. John's probably saying, don't go so skimpy with the jam. I mean, he does like that portion. Okay, let's choose one with that big, it's not so bad. Actually, that looks okay, if you like that. All right, let's keep on here. Now, you know what I'd like to try? I would like to try this uh, butterscotchy one. I think I need a knife for that. Uh, I'm going to turn my pears down, if you noticed. It's about time that you make sure, just push on the cartouche, make sure they're getting... And I'm going to turn it down a couple. Make sure they're all getting covered. It was starting to boil over. I'm going to take this off now. All right, let's put the caramel on this one. I kind of like this idea. Now, there's a Portuguese, no, 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 an Italian cookie. Maybe Italian. That uses this. Look at that. That's just a new thing for me, John. What do you think? I think he'd like that. Okay, I like these. They're pretty. I'm going to stick with this caramel. I think that's nice. Also, it uh, sticks on the cookie really nice, and it doesn't roll off. So, you know, line up the little scallops. Everything matters. Details matter. And this is where I really get the joy in making food for other people, is when it's I'm home alone, I'm making something beautiful like this, and tasty at the same time. And every time I'm cooking for somebody, or I'm making a certain cookie that somebody likes, or a certain dish, it gives me the opportunity to think about them. And you know, while you're quiet and you're just making something, I think about that person. I think about how they'll respond when they see something delicious. I think about what they mean. I think about their funny personality. Next week, not only are we making something for Ivory Towers, a cake, I am announcing a new drink in the Rude Awakening line called Bombay Buzz. And it's for my friend Bombay, who I think might be on here today. And if she is, she saw the drink yesterday and said, okay, that looks amazing. 
it does and it tastes amazing next week we'll bring that recipe to you and we'll bring those sippies sips to you and maybe liz and chris and justin can use it on their sip and see show that night all right that's not finished but they are beautiful i'll finish all of those when I'm done the the show because I don't want to get past our time. Okay, a little bit of sugar. We're going to dust them. That's the really important part. I think John will agree. My grandmother would have agreed. They were naked without this little bit of dusting of sugar. All right, folks. That is Jamie Dodgers made from scratch easy not very hard using tools within your kitchen okay i'm going to clean this up and show you how to plate the pears in the meantime i want you to watch my essential tools part four it's supplies and storage it's a different format it's not me standing here we had a little bit of fun with it we we're trying you know different wandering technique uh i thought it was going to be edited i cracked up in it it's still there because we ran out of time. So essential tools, storage and supplies, part four, watch this. Welcome everyone to my essential tools series. Today we are on part four. This is not the most exciting part about your kitchen, but nonetheless it is necessary. Today we're going to talk about storage and supplies. So let's go, I didn't take things out, let's go over to the cupboards and see. First, you need towels. You need dish towels, uh, bar mop. These are towels that you'll see me use often in my series. And these are just an everything wipe up towel. You can have uh, covers for your bowls and rough towels to cover things when they're proofing, suppose. Towels, dish towels. The next thing you're going to need is plastic containers of all different sorts. You're going to need the types that hold little bits of food, tiny bits of food. You're going to need the type that, these are disposable. They, 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 you use them a few times and then you get rid of them when they get soiled and they will. Thing you wanna remember is have a little bit of glass. You wanna have some containers that are glass and some containers that are plastic. Next thing, still not interesting, but still necessary. We go into paper products. Parchment paper, absolutely necessary. Tin foil, waxed paper. Not everybody uses it, but there's a real good use for this. You need a uh, cling wrap. Down here, we have some bamboo skewers. Those are part of our essential tools. They're good for fruit kebabs, vegetable kebabs, grilling. You need parchment paper rounds but if you've got the parchment paper in this you can always cut it remember we're talking about basic tools something that everybody can find even if it's uh, from a product that you've finished is glass jars they make great storage a little bit of a rubber seal great storage again paper bags uh, waxed wraps a little bit of paper bags here, some aluminum foil. This is paper products that you need. Oven mitts, you need oven mitts of this sort. And you need oven mitts that are just the little tiny ones that you might use on the handle. All right, let's go over to something else you need. Essential tools. You need resealable plastic bags variety of sizes. We've got little ones, medium ones, big ones. You get what you think you need. Oh, the most important part, trash bags. Yes, that's part of an essential kitchen. And I think most of you know that. And cleansers. You can't go wrong with a jug of vinegar. Just keep vinegar in your cupboard and it's an all purpose cleaner. Dish soap. You need those things. All right, like I said, this wasn't the most interesting of the essential tools, but nonetheless, you need these tools. Uh, next time we have one of these series, we will be using... <laughs> you might want to take that out. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess he cut it off. Anyway, uh, yes, the cookies are out. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, yeah, the difference between parchment paper and wax paper. Parchment paper is not waxed. It is a paper that has a light coating 
and it is used, it, you could put it in the oven because there's nothing that's going to melt. Wax paper is actually melt, melted wax. It is good for wrapping, and I know my kids are saying, really mom, wax paper, because it's as old as I am. But it's one of those things that I just think is necessary. Uh, if you wanna wrap some food up, it can be reusable. It's almost like the wax bee paper that you can buy now. Wax paper just doesn't have that long. I made these yesterday. Here's what you do. Those are poaching, correct? And my cartouche is boiling over. I'm going to turn them down just a bit. Those were These were made yesterday. What I do is when those are done, I will put them off to the cupboard onto outside, even if you've got a closed-in porch that uh, raccoons won't get to, and you let them steep overnight so that the, the juice goes right into the pear. Then the next day I removed them and I reduced my liquid. And this is the poaching liquid that has gone into almost a jelly. All that was is sugar, water, and the spices that I put in. But I drained it so that I would just have this gelatinous sauce. So I've put a scoop in there of ice cream that you don't have to use the ice cream. I thought it might add a little bit of a nice look to it. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of this sauce. I'm gonna make sure that there's a nice bed of it. I am going to, and this is why I, I kept the stems on. I don't wanna crush them because they're soft. No sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got one in there. Now remember I said that I was going to do a couple halfway. I cut them in half. This is what it looks like. You tell me if you think that looks delicious. Maybe, you know, if you wanted to give one and a half. I'm just going to stick with the one. I think that's a nice uh, plate right there. It's a delicious dessert. And it has a little bit of a wine, but such a sweet Okay, so here I'm going to now, I'm going to uh, put a little agave syrup. Would you want to put chocolate? Maybe it's not my flavor. For this, you might want to put a little honey. I thought that the agave syrup, just a little bit of drizzle this way, added a nice, get it over on the rim. Yeah, that looks delicious. And then I would put crushed almonds, crushed pecans, or root awakening granola. Fancy that, that I had some of this in the house. I would then sprinkle that onto the ice cream, onto the pear, just a little, you know, make sure that there might be a nut there. That's a delicious look. Now, don't be afraid to add a little bit more of that now that you've... And there, my friends, is easy poached pears. Even Chris would like this, and he doesn't like pears, and he doesn't like wine. There we go. Poached pears, jammy dodgers. Two delicious things. Today wasn't about savory. Today, this is my forte is baking. Today was about delicious things, and something that you may have always thought was too hard to make, and it's not. Those now are going to uh, go outside to cool, because that's been enough time. I'm going to shut them off. They're going to soak all night tomorrow. I'll do the same process. Remove the pears, reduce the liquid, and then we have this. They can go in the fridge and they can last for days. All right, next week is our Ivory Towers coconut cake, our Bombay Buzz drink. It's made with Bombay gin and a little bit of curacao. If you have those things, get them ready because you may want to have a little bit of a brunch drink with us. We've got our whole season planned. We're looking forward to celebrating uh, Kai and Chris's birthdays the week after. We've got a menu starting to really start with that. We are looking to, after that, have a brunch. I think we might end our season with a brunch. All brunch foods, foods, and everybody's looking for those. I thank you very much for showing up today, for taking your Sunday to cook with me. And don't forget tonight, if you have nothing to do at 5.30 and you'd like to have some good entertainment, come back to the Speakeasy channel, my sister channel, and watch us. Thanks for coming. Bye.